All right, welcome back to the shop. So, today we're gonna play around with an old breaker that has seen its day. It's broken, won't reset any longer. We're gonna see how it works. Take it apart, see what's inside. Should be fun. This is a QOB breaker. Square D's QO line, and the B comes from this screw here being a bolt-on. It's very uh, much akin to the QO breaker in a house that has very similar appearance, but has these clip-in jaws inside. Uh, a lot of the newer panels actually in industry will take both. They will take QOB and the regular QO line. Uh, we can see here both of these have a 10,000 amp interrupting rating. Very similar, same family. We're going to take this one apart, see what it looks like inside. This one here, probably very much similar. All right, so we'll see if we did this without completely screwing everything up inside. Okay, I think we did. So, you can see what's inside here. There is spring tension on some of this. This does not have all of the components that breakers always have in them. Here's our contact here. Goes right to this bus connector. This connects right on the bus in the panel. And there is your contact tip. Here is the mating contact tip right here. And that is not going the way it should. It should go like that. Should push over like this when you go to the on position but for some reason this mechanism is not resetting so let's see if we can see what's going on there it looks like this is supposed to be up inside of that guy right there yep yeah I see okay so this tab fell out of here, and this, what are they doing here? This is all part of the spring tensioning. Here's your little orange piece that moves in front of that window when it's tripped. So let's see if I can get that in there without launching all these springs everywhere. Just so we can see the mechanism work the way it should. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what happened to this thing. Why it would not Yeah, something's something's broken in here for sure. What exactly? That definitely needs to get onto this guy. Then when this pivots needs to get this down there. Hmm. Well, let's just take it apart here further and see what we get. So, get our little tab out of there. Huh. 
a lot of the bigger breakers will actually have uh, arc suppression built into them and that is to help collapse the field when the uh, circuit is opened up you can see this is under a fair amount of spring tension so that when it trips it'll very quickly open up this here appears to be some sort of it's on the contact with Oh, there's actually adjustment there. It's on the contact with the, the, the load part of the circuit. Well, we didn't take too much apart here. Let's see if we can get this somewhat back together. And uh, see if we can't figure out if this adjustment does anything. Alright, so after a lot of screwing around, I think I actually got this thing figured out. So I think what they're doing is this is a bimetallic element that the current flows through uh, via this bonding wire right here. See it down low. That is connected to this contact that I now have touching the piece that goes to the bus bar. So what happens is if you turn the breaker off you open up the contacts if you turn the breaker on the spring the tensions that and holds the contact together now if this bimetallic element heats up and opens like that the breaker goes into the trip position you saw that open this up opened up our contact and we got our red light here to show up so now to reset that we go to the off position and you'll see this paw catch this here that's off and then we can turn this back on just like that so what I did to get this to work was I actually just adjusted this screw. Um, if I back this back off enough, I'll probably be able to trip it and it won't reset. Let's see here, I don't know how far I turned it to get it to work. But here we go. Nope, still working. Now oh, maybe I loosened it. I don't know. I adjusted this screw here and it, it started working again. So I think, I don't know, I mean this is not the sort of thing that you should be doing. If you get them that they're not working, what's happening is is this, if they don't want to reset, this, this paw isn't engaging here on the bimetallic uh, element and uh, you, sh you should replace the breaker there's there's no fixing these components but that's actually what went wrong here with this you don't want to play around with uh, with this sort of stuff there's too much I don't know if I completely screwed up the short time rate you know the trip point of this breaker so here we go I think I got it now that it's not gonna reset it's doing exactly what it was when I opened it up. So you can see that this tang is just not catching. So when I adjust this out, just a hair, it catches and we can reset the breaker. 
So I don't know. I don't. Not a square D rep. I would imagine this is not advisable to uh, to do those sort of adjustments. But that's fascinating how the breaker works. You can see it's this bimetallic element here. And as that would heat up, it would push this and it would move. And it would trip the breaker just like that. It would open up. Circuit would be turned de-energized. And then what you would have to do is physically turn the breaker off again. If this was still warm, you still would not be able to reset it. And then once it's cooled off enough, you can turn the circuit back on. So that's pretty neat. That's how the, uh, the inside of a QO breaker works. Very interesting. Um, this screw underneath this sticker is what I adjusted, but it being under a sticker, I would imagine if you burn a building down and they look to see that that, that sticker is not over that screw, you're probably going to have a pretty rough time with your insurance claim. So I would uh, definitely steer clear from playing around with these if they don't want to reset. There's a reason. Uh, but it's just fascinating to see how the internal mechanism works. So there we go. Uh, maybe it's something that can be done by qualified personnel. If you send this uh, breaker back to factory and they could requalify it in the right, you know, situation, that might be calibration for this breaker. Or maybe it's just calibration for building and factory. I don't know, but it obviously did adjust this so that it worked properly again. So there we go. Interesting look inside of a breaker. Uh, not as complex, though it is a small breaker. Maybe I'll see if I can get my hands on some bigger breakers and we'll see if we can take them apart and see what makes them work inside. I've had a bunch of part in the field uh, replacing them in switch gear and whatnot. There's a lot more to them, but uh, overall the tripping mechanisms are all fairly similar. Uh, they all have a something that creates the trip and then you have to manually reset the entire mechanism. So there we go. Look at a square D breaker inside. Thanks for watching.